silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Keeping it raw, keeping it real, 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 real. Hey, what's cracking, y'all? Um, so the idea is to talk about what's currently happening in terms of like the racial outbursts that are taking place in America, the whole George Floyd, Omar Arbery situation, to kind of give my two cents on it and also talk to a few people in terms of their experiences here in the UK and also to discuss potential solutions and I guess to compare what the UK looks like right now versus the US. I'm going to have someone on first. We're going to talk to Shay. Shay is the homegirl. Um, I've known her for a minute. Um, she got a bit of insight into a lot of these things and a few interesting experiences. I'm going to be flipping the background here and there so y'all can kind of have a view on the exact topic we're talking about. How are you doing, Mama? Hey. You good? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Unfortunately. Good. Okay, good to hear, good to hear, good to hear. Um, how's your day going? It's all right. Just, just trying to get through the day, really, and chilling and enjoying the sunshine. Okay. So we've been talking, like, offline about a lot of stuff that's happening. I know you feel, like, super passionate um, mm -hmm. super passionate about a lot of stuff um, going on right now. And um, I don't know, man. Like, let's let's start with, like, your first reaction. You feel me? Like, the whole the Joy Floyd situation where the police officer um, had his knee on, on the dude's neck and was trying to arrest him. And the dude, you know what I mean, passed or died from that stuff. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what's your take on that? I think when I first saw it, like, I'd already heard about it and seen the headline. Mm -hmm. But as mm -hmm. I was watching it, I was just thinking, this isn't real. Mm -hmm. And I kind of couldn't watch it through, like, the first at least three times. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I knew what the end result was because I'd seen the headline. Yeah. But then when I finally watched it, before I knew it, I just had tears. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. even know okay. when I was yeah. crying. Because I just mm. thought, I just felt like that was my brother. Do you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah. And I just, I think when he called out for his mother, like, you know, from growing up and being around mm. a lot of black people, like, yeah. you know, black men love their mums. Yeah. So for yeah. that to be something you call out, it's almost like, if I start thinking about it now, I'll probably start crying again. Because it was just like, mm. yeah, it was, it was just, I don't know. It was mad. It's it's wild, man. Cause yeah, the whole crying for your mother thing—it's nuts. And it, it turned out that his mom died the same date, um, like last year or something like that. You feel me? Like wow. the same week, the same date, the year before. And so his mom isn't even alive. So him crying for his mother—that's some some next level shit. Because it's like, is that what he saw before he died? Kind of thing. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. he knew his mom was gone already, and he's about to like he's. He's physically running out of breath and passing out. And he, him calling for his mom, it's like, it's a cry for help, but also, like, maybe calling to, like, yo, I'm about to go meet my mom. Yeah. Like, that is wild. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it was yeah. just, um... Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, I can't, I can't even process it. It's hard to process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nuts, man. And this is the thing. So, like, um... But like, America is nuts. And you know you know my feelings about America, you feel me? I feel like, yeah. and I've said this on, on my post, I feel like it's too big to police. And the biggest thing for me, and I, and I had it on I had it on some of my tweets, is saying that, like, you know, if this is what we're seeing now, imagine what we don't see. This you know is exactly, saying? that's exactly imagine, what imagine I was saying. Like, we, we got to see this, but then even when you look at the police officers, this to them was another day. Like, they've been doing yeah. this. Yeah. Like, that officer was chilling. Like, your hand is in your pockets. You're chilling. You're just... Yeah. Like, it, at no point did he even move to say, oh, rah. He said, I can't breathe. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, and then mm. try maybe reposition himself or get the fuck up. Do you know what I'm trying mm. to say? Mm. Mm. It was just mm. kind of like... And every, like, footage they've shown from different angles, mm. you know, at no point was this guy resisting arrest or anything. You know what's not? Did you see the second video that came out? The second video came out um, was when they were actually beating him up in the car. You get yes, me? This I saw that. A couple, couple of days ago, you feel me? Like, the first yeah. video, obviously, we see the guy with his knee on his neck. He's choking him out, whatever. He's got a hand in his pocket. And they're saying the hand in the pocket was even to apply more pressure to to, to the force on the neck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, okay. the this, this second video where he's in the car, we're not really seeing what's happening, but, like, like two officers on two different ends of the car. And, the, and they're yeah. going in on him before mm. they managed to drag him out, put the knee on him. <laughs> And then, like, it's wild. And my, my thing is, like, in the UK, like, 
this is like one of the topics I want to talk about. Obviously, like it's crazy. I, I don't know if we can even compare because we do have racism here, and there are events here and there that happen. But can we even compare to 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 a place like the U.S. that's so broad, the span is so great that you can't even see what's happening in different bits and crevices of a country like that? We saw that on camera, but bro, yeah. But, you know, based on what's happened, it seems like that's what happens almost every other day there, isn't it? Yeah. It's just that this was just an opportunity to see on camera. And yeah. obviously, it's been spread all over the world, and then there's outrage. But I yeah. think the reason we're all coming together is because even in UK, as much as we might say, oh, my gosh, you know, we're lucky to be in UK, mm. we're still dealing with that as well. It might mm. be in a different way. Mm. You know, it might be within the workforce. It might just be on your daily activities. But mm -hmm. I mean, black people all over the world, we keep mm -hmm. dealing with it. And it's just like, why? Why are they so afraid of us? Why do they hate us so much? What have mm -hmm. we actually done? And even with all this oppression, suppression, however you want to put it, we still manage to excel. Yeah. So imagine yeah. we didn't so, have so. all these forces against us. We would actually yeah. be sick because we are sick already. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, and I think that's the. I had just had a conversation with um with Blinky, and we we're just talking about this. And the main question being why, like, what what is the source of the racial divide? What is the source of the racism? What is the the source of the the prejudice against us? And I think it 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 speaks to what you just said. The concept that anything that you know people of color tend to attach this, themselves to tends to excel to a different level. And I think yeah. the concept of racism is a fear, a fear of people. Um, being better or, or taking over mm. or superseding what they've already created, quote unquote, they, you get what I'm saying, mm. and that's that seems to be what it is. I mean, you talked about um, everything we touch, we excel in, like, and then our experiences here in the UK. Um, do you mm. want to give us a little bit of insight in terms of like your experiences in the workplace or um, growing up in school or anything like that? Any any racial situation that, that you, you've come across? I mean, I've got a few. I mean, I guess the first one would be probably when I was at school, secondary school. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there was a point in time when it wasn't really cool to be African or something. And mm -hmm. then obviously, I guess with mixed race people, I guess there's other issues there where some of them don't necessarily identify with being black, depending on how they've been brought up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I know there was a particular girl, I guess she was raised by her, her mom who was white and she would always just f um, throw in these like sly remarks and digs and be like, you know, you Africans live in huts or you people can't speak English properly, just little, little things. And I'd be like, mm. okay, okay. But with me, you know, I was just chilling because I'm just trying to get through school. And then yeah. one day I lost my temper, you know. And I remember I ended up hitting like the table because I was just so pissed because it was like mm. every other day we reported this and no one really said anything, mm. you know. Ooh. So I lose my temper and then I just remember there was like a, a teacher, a white male teacher comes and grabs me and pushes me up against the wall. Mm. And all my friends were like, leave her alone. And, you know, secondary school, like, fucking get off yeah. her, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Obviously, everything then dies down. And then I get taken to, like, the maybe head teacher's office or whatever it was. Then everyone had to write an account of what happened. And there was this particular white girl that I guess all the teachers loved. And, you know, she's like the, the star pupil or whatever. Not that she was any smarter than me or anyone else, but you know how it is. And she wrote her account, and out of everyone's account, that's the only account they paid attention to. The one white girl that came to write an account, and everything she wrote was against me, didn't mention anything about what was said, didn't even mention the, the male teacher, you know, grabbing me up or whatever. Mm. And then from nowhere, they were like, oh, we're going to suspend you. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm getting suspended. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, obviously to get suspended, I was really shook. Sure. Oh my gosh, when I get home, my parents are going to beat your me. Parents, or, you know, yeah. Because yeah. obviously, like, you're meant to go to school and read your book and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But because I'd always been talking to my parents about stuff anyway, funnily enough, they were so supportive and they were just like, we're proud of you for speaking up and, you know, standing mm -hmm. for what you believe in. And that gave me the confidence that like, when I did go back to school, I was like, I was calm because... I knew that my parents had my back. I knew that my friends had my back. And it didn't phase me, but I can understand how that could phase people. And I guess um, when I look at things as well, because I guess I was smart. When I say I'm smart, I, I got good grades. So I think that also helps because I knew 
there wasn't any way they could really hold me back. You know, I was in all the top sets and stuff, but I could imagine someone who might have been in the bottom set or was a bit more problematic, that could have, you know what I mean, held them back a bit. Um, yeah, no, no, that was the first thing that really, really opened my eyes to yeah. what you can just kind of go through just for being black and if a white mm. person's not in your corner, what could potentially happen. Yeah, that's wild. I you, mean, the concept that you, you the, the idea that um, you needed that white, well, well that white person in your corner, um, mm. that's not, again, I was speaking to someone and they were talking about, um, it's like, we, we joke about it, a lot of us joke about it, but we talk about, oh, yeah. you need that white friend. That, that white, white friend, friend, yeah. That white friend is like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing, it's a universal concept, it's not just in the US, yeah. it's here as well. The idea that yeah. when the police rolls up or you stops you, for whatever reason, if you have a white person in the car, the more likely to, to, to allow you yeah. if that white person gets to speak or that white person yeah. speaks for you because the white person that's innocent. You feel me? Yeah. And the white friend thing in school is mad because it's like every, no one else's account of what happened. Like, no one else. Relevant. And literally other people wrote stuff. And that was the one thing they focused on. And obviously, I don't want to say a name, but like now that I'm thinking about it, the emotions are coming back because you just yeah, remember yeah, stuff yeah. and you feel wrong. Like, I got suspended because one white girl wrote an account and you guys believe that. And then and this the way cool. they tried to speak it cool. was, yeah, they tried to spin it and say, oh, we're going to, we want Shay to have some time off, some mm. time out. And that, that was yeah. it. It's, it's, it's so the yeah, wildest I mean, thing is that that's just school, right? This is a reflection mm. of what happens when we grow up anyway, like in real life. You feel me? Like yeah. when we grow up and we're adults. Yeah, I'm saying because I can imagine stuff like that would probably happen in the workplace as well for a lot of people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like we get scrutinized a lot of black people. So this isn't about victimization, right? I don't believe this yeah. is a case of victimization. This is more of a case of tell it, tell, say, say what it is, right? Let people actually understand the levels of you know this racism and where it actually begins. Because when you were in school, like how old were you when when that's when that situation happened? Second of school, I probably would have been about I want to say 14, maybe when it happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, obviously, okay. I'd, I'd seen signs of it, mm. but didn't really make the connection too much because I just thought maybe because there'll just be little comments like you guys are so loud, you guys are always mm. talking loudly, but that's just the way our culture is. You know, you know mm. how when we all get in the room and we're talking and we're just, we're very passionate people and yeah, that can work yeah, both yeah. ways. Like we can love hard, but then yeah. if you start with us and our backs are against the wall, we will fight hard as well. Yeah, and I yeah. almost feel like they push you to that point because they mm -hmm. want to see you explode so they can say, oh, that's that aggressive black person or whatever yeah. it is. But if, like, if you know how hard it is to sometimes hold in your character and hold in parts mm -hmm. of your personality, even at work, because mm -hmm. you're trying to conform. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think they understand that when we leave our homes, there's almost like a different layer we put on when we go outside. Yeah, that's the Do you know what I mean? I don't have to explain it. Yeah. So there's this concept called um, social acting, right? It's a concept in sociology. I forgot the name of the um, the philosopher or the 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 the, the, the students or the, the lecturer that came up with the concept. It, it, the idea that we're all social actors. Um, yeah. This concept that we, we all look a certain type of way in different people's eyes when we, when we interact yeah. with society, and we all have to wear a mask. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like the mask of you know people of color is 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 a very vivid one. You get what I'm saying? Because it says when you're in a certain place of work, you need to dial down your blackness, quote unquote blackness, yeah. right? When you're in school, you need to dial down blackness because of this thing, this innate thing that a lot of us have in terms of expression. You know, a lot of us are loud. A lot of us are expressive. Yeah. A lot of us are creative in that sense. But in, in the particular structure, in the social structure that we're kind of living in the mm -hmm. West, it's looked, down, it's looked down upon, especially in corporate spaces, especially in educational spaces. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's interesting. I don't know if a lot of white people are aware of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The idea that I'm not being myself in your yeah. space right now. This is not the real me. I've dialed down, I've tuned down, I've left the real me at home. I've put on a mask just to be able to be accepted by your your people. You know what I'm like saying? I just, now, now that you're even saying that, I remember there was a time at work when I had this, this manager that, you know, when I think about it again, you know, sometimes you say, oh, I don't want to use the word racist because it feels like a strong word. But then when it boils down to mm -hmm. it, it's all in the same. It fits in the same box. You see what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I remember when I was explaining to my um, head of department who I got on really like well with about what the issues were. Mm -hmm. There was a point where I had to 
excuse myself. I had to say to him, I had to give him a disclaimer before I started talking. I said, look, I'm about to start talking. And when I start talking, I might start using my hands a lot. My voice might start <laughs> getting raised. It might be a bit right. of an attitude because I'm really, really passionate right now. Mm. And I'm really feeling this. And you know, when I talk or when most of us, talk, a lot of body language, it's a lot of hands, we express ourselves. But it, it, it kind of made me kind of chuckle a bit after that. I had to give that disclaimer. Yeah. So I wouldn't come across as aggressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just a little thing like that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the thing is, it's, yeah. weird, it's weird that you have to give someone like a warning. Hey, I'm about to be myself. Mm. Please don't, don't freak out. Everything is okay yeah. right now. Don't yeah. worry. I'm just about to talk to you like I talk to my peers. You're going but to I talk be okay. To people, yeah. I don't get you. shook. I'm not going to do There's nothing. There's not a threat. You will survive. <laughs> it, it, I just, I, like, when I thought about it and I was telling, like, people, like, my friends later, I just remember we were laughing because it was like, you really had to explain what you're about to do is not a threat. Like, it's, it's a bit mad. Yeah, like, of, but, um, just to make, make that point I was making before, in terms of social action theory, the guy that actually came up with theory is Max Weber. I think he was German. Social action theory, yeah. the idea that you have to change your percent change who you are in order to be accepted by a particular society um mm -hmm. my my guy Kim Sapara said racism in school is mad just look at history lessons yeah um Matt said I've I've seen my friends have to do this in our with our boss aka I have to dial down tone down the blackness and the thing about oh. toning down <laughs> the blackness is interesting because let's say someone like um I don't know let's say even let's say even the Amish situation right no actually more more the George Floyd situation. Yeah, more the George Floyd mm. situation, the most recent one. Let's say he um he's a big guy, right? He looks like mm. I've got the name of that basketball player that that's the, calls himself his twin. Yeah, that he looks like, isn't it? Yeah, I know yeah. you're talking he the one he kinda calls his twin, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. right. So let's say he's a big guy, he's over six foot, he's hench, right? And yeah. the police officer says to him, Um, oh listen, um, we need to we need to talk to you. And then the guy's like, yeah. what you want to talk to me about? I had to call him about um a, a fake ten dollar bill. That's the reason. Okay. That's the reason. That's he, how he was played. taking Stephen Jackson. He's he's played for the NBA. Yeah. Thanks, JY. Yeah. So that's the guy he called his twin. Now they arrested um this dude because they believed that he had a fake ten dollar bill that he was using to purchase something in the shop. So they took him, and I assume what was happening. He was just like, "Why are you guys? What's going on?" The thing is, he's a big guy. So them trying yeah. to hold him or whatever, he's not even resisting like crazy. From videos that I've seen, he wasn't resisting crazy. It, it took like maybe two guys, whatever, like, and they've got handcuffs on this big guy. They already feel small. They already feel powerless just in his natural essence of him being big. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. He being big, he being black. And it might not even be provocative, but the fact that mm -hmm. they, their insecurity has kicked in, they're like, oh, he's not easy to move. He's not easy to... To, 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 to divert or to adjust or to control. Let's start putting force on him. Mm. That's, that's nuts, right? Managers that's, being himself. You know, I'm saying. It's, it's that mentality of like, they see us and like we're standing and we're just, we're just standing in our glory. And it's mm. like, I want to hold you back. You know, I've mm. got to put what handcuffs on you so that mm. I know I can control you. Mm. And mm. like I said, if you relate that to the workplace or wherever, you can see that sometimes. You know, you can see certain um, colleagues or people that it's almost like until they get one up on you or feel like mm. they're your manager or they're controlling you, they won't rest. Yeah. Because why did you take, how many, was, wasn't it four of them? Yeah, yeah, there was four. It was two, 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 two obvious and then two came later from what I saw. Yeah, it was four guys and it's like, he was even like complying with it. Like imagine if he really wanted to show you like, what was up. Yeah. And he said, all right, let me chill. Let me respect authority and look at the result. So I, I, put, I put up a clip of, um, of I think I've got a picture here. I, I, black people ain't solving the problem as usual. I think we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But I put, the, put up the clip of the guy who, um, who had his phone. Well, he was trying to record the police officer. Mm. And he was trying to re record the badge <laughs> numbers. And then the police officer yeah, grabbed, one, yeah. grabbed the phone from him. <laughs> And chucked it, yeah. and then the dude slapped him. You feel what I'm saying? And I mm. asked people, majority of people, I said, "Do you guys think this was right?" Seventy-five percent of people that I asked said yes, that was the right move, and twenty-five percent mm -hmm. said no. Right? 
Personally, I was on the line of, okay, I think it was a bit excessive in terms of his activity. You get what I'm saying? I, 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 in terms of his response, mm. sorry. I don't think it needed to be an aggressive response to that level. And a few respondents <laughs> like, um, what, what's the name? Okay, so, yeah. So, welcome to 40-something. She said, essentially, she was just saying, like, look, police officers in that country, partic particularly because she's in the States, right? She's like, police officers don't know the place. They get a little bit of power, a little bit of uh, a position, a status, and then they think they can treat anyone anyhow. So the, the, the throwing of the phone was a representation of what they actually do to people in general anyway, right? Mm. So she was just like, he deserved to get clapped so that he can understand what it feels like to abuse power in the other way. You got what I'm saying? All he what was doing was recording your badge number or whatever it was. Yeah. Why yeah. did you need to take the phone and chuck it? And the guy was, it was reflex, didn't it? If somebody mm. does something to you, before you know it, well, sir, you've hit somebody and you're like, oh, my bad. Mm. But then mm. wasn't the police officer aggressive for taking the phone and throwing it away as well? Yeah. No? Yeah. To me, I was like, okay, that's a bit much. You know, I, we've got to look at things from both sides. Yeah, 100%. Look at things from both sides. And I think um, it leads to what this, our visions, our visions one just said, he said, black people are not helping themselves. In that kind of situation... And I know a lot of people get backlash for, for saying this, this perspective. I don't think retaliation immediately was, is the right um, action. I know you said it's reflex, right? But I yeah. think a lot of people in a lot of situations in life or in general need to, need to take a moment before they act. Because at the end of the day, it's not about an eye for an eye, in my opinion, yeah, right? Yeah. We'll get into the conversation of is, does violence befit violence in a second. But if someone grabs something off me and my reaction is to is to is to react um physically i understand emotions are high right now tensions are high with a lot of situations but i think that escalates the problem i think that as a catalyst to the issue you get what i'm saying that's salt bait mm -hmm. and i think it's, it's something that's only to take a step back rethink and then you know like address the situation in, a, in an orderly manner in a more logical manner like yeah that gives them an excuse to shoot you get what i'm saying that gives them yeah, an excuse yeah, to retaliate. yeah, yeah. I mean, so this, yeah. I don't know. That, that was one of them ones where I was like, yeah, but he took the phone and threw it. At the same, I don't know if I necessarily would have reacted like that. I probably would have just been like, why the fuck are you throwing my phone for? Yeah. But I don't think I would have hit the police officer because um, I don't know. Um, I understand the authority and I can kind of see their police officers and they've got probably got guns and they're armed and stuff. So I would have kind of been aware of that. Yeah. But, um, and and, and, yeah. I, and, and I guess I guess people will say some stuff like, um, when they instill fear in us, that's the reason why we don't act, right? And that's the reason why they still manage to treat us like dirt, because we're afraid. And then, I know I had a poll or, earlier in the week talking about, um, well, the idea is, it's called the bystander effect, right? The idea is that when you see something happening, a lot of us right now just have our, our cameras up. A lot of us are just recording mm -hmm. the activity as opposed to actually reacting to it and maybe trying to help. And my, my explanation for that was that a lot of people are just scared. A lot of people are scared of what's going to happen to them. And I compared it or I alluded to, you know, the civil rights movement where I had Malcolm X talking about um, um, basically fight fire with fire. You get what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. Defend yourselves. And so that becomes a question of, look, if we don't actually defend ourselves physically, are we not just giving them more of an opportunity to act? You get me? Are we not just telling them it's okay to behave this way you get what i'm saying um yeah i guess you can defend yourself but you also have to look at it from the aspect of i think it was important that cameras at, were out and were recording yeah. it that's one of yeah. the reasons why there's this uproar now because mm. someone had the initiative to bring out like me like you know me i never bring out my camera i always forget and then the moments passed and then i'm there explaining it even though i can explain things very well there's always yeah. that he said she said thing. So yeah, I yeah. think that having cameras were great and I think it's very important to use, you know, the techno technology around us. But um, in terms of defending yourself, that's just one of them things where I think it's a natural thing. Like I've always been the kind of person, even from when I was younger, I always want to back people. Do you know what mm. I mean? That I see are not being treated equally. So I mm. think it's all about who you are as a person. Some people, they're bystanders. They don't really know how to react. It makes them uncomfortable. They don't know how, like, they don't really, like a lot of people say, oh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on, you yeah, know, but then yeah. there's some of the two quick thinkers who can be like, we can already see this is happening. That's happening. That, 
that guy's um, kneeling on his neck. That's happening there. Mm. You're, you're already clocking everything. There's mm. other people who are just in shock that I'm actually witnessing something that I read about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you have to also bear that in mind. And yeah, it, yeah. I don't know. Matt said it's heavy because if black people stay peaceful or react, there's a high chance of death happening either way. It's not black people that have to change how they respond. It's the police, etc. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It, it 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 is the authorities and, and the people in power. I mean, that quote I put up, that James Baldwin quote. It said, "If one really wishes to know how justice is administered in the country, don't question the authorities. Ask the people that the authorities are supposed to be protecting." You feel me? And that's when you can actually see what the real problem is. Yeah, it's not it's not us, right? It's it's administration. You get me? It's how people respond. But I do think we can't be um, free of fault completely, man. I do think there are there are actions that people can take because, for instance, so I've got it here, the looting thing, right? People mm -hmm. respond to everything right now by looting, by destroying businesses, by acting out. I blame that on various things. Of course, you know, the murders are happening, right? The, the but didn't happen a few years ago in London? Where yeah, I yeah, think his name was... Yeah, that happened, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah, same sort happened. of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, because the kid got shot, right? Mm -hmm. um, so people are looting and reacting. And I, again, I feel like some of it is uncalled for, right? So Killer Mike spoke about this recently. He was just like, look, um, so the Martin Luther King quote was that looting is, is the language of the unheard. Right, people that don't have a voice, they 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 lose, they protest. Sorry, protesting is the language of the of the um unheard people without a voice, and then um po protests go to the next level where people start looting and stuff like that. But the quote is a bit bigger, right? The rest of the quote says something along the lines of um. Protest is the language of the unheard, but we should basically try not to ruin our homes. We should try and salvage what we still can, yeah. and protest accordingly. And if you see what well, I've got up there, the guy says, all right, you're out of the way. Uh, like long enough to live in those homes because the way they're going around shooting all of us, yeah. what is it, like, what's the point of protecting your home if you can't yeah. even, if you don't even know you're going to make it back home? Yeah, yeah. No, so, this is, this, yeah, I, that's I hear, all well. No, I, I hear what you're saying, but that's, okay, that's assuming that the, you know, um, activities go to that level. But if they don't go to that mm -hmm. level, then you just fucked up everything that you have. Right? It, it, I it works. It works both ways. Like I don't, I don't. This looting thing, especially when you're trying to attack the man, right? The man, mm. the man is not getting hit by you attacking small businesses. The man is out of reach. The way to reach the man is not by breaking the small businesses. You get what I'm saying? It's by hitting the big businesses. It's by talking yeah. about. It's, it's by talking about you know people coming together and stopping stop buying this, yeah. this these these things. Stop putting money, investing into 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 like yeah. Coke. Stop investing money into Nike. Stop investing money into Amazon. It's things like that that you know people's actions can actually have a reaction. When you're breaking down, you know, local um, boss man's business here, or or mm. or the Italian restaurant over there, or looting um, Sainsbury's, like bro, is the <laughs> yeah. management, the sales staff at Sainsbury's, bro, like you you're messing up everyone's businesses. And then yeah. when things when things go to shit, like why would they want to protect you when you did this to their businesses? You're destroying your quote your potential salvation or place that you could actually go to 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 to, to fend for yourself. People that can save you when things go to hell. You're fucking up their businesses. I think so it's I'm, important for us to understand that this situation is going to create a lot of other external factors and other, I guess, a lot of reactions. You know, I don't personally understand the whole point of looting. But at the same time, I don't want us to lose focus on the fact that, you know, and when I say this, I'm not generalizing before people say, oh, you're generalizing, but kind of have to, that mm. white people are sitting on the sidelines, for t um, they've been sitting on the sidelines and just watching us suffer. And the, the whole mm. point of this is you now they need to come together and join us and stand up and say, this isn't right. Yeah. You know, all the other yeah. things that's happening, cool. It's not good to loot. It is good to loot, whatever. The fact mm. of the matter is, is an innocent man, and I say innocent because we still don't really know if he did it or not, whatever they said he did, but an mm. innocent man was killed for no reason. Mm. And we've you got know, to... Even, just, even if he did it, his crime, his, his crime, official yeah. crime would have been using a fake banknote. Okay. Yeah, that's, you know I mean, 
I don't even, for me, sometimes even when people are trying to dissect it and say, oh, what did he do? You know, I've had, when all these um, situations usually come up, you usually hear some people say, oh, but what did he do for that? And I'm like, mm. it's not about what he did. Does mm. what you are seeing, what you are hearing, does it make sense to you? Mm, mm, mm. Why does there need to be a justification mm. to treat somebody like that? Mm. Like, oh, I'm, let's I'm, like, really do it. I'm just reading back up. And um, just like yesterday said, Every citizen in the U U.S. has the right to ask for and document an officer's name and badge number. He damaged okay. the guy's property without reason. The guy didn't have a threatening posture. Maybe not knock him out. Maybe not knock him out, but the officer needs to be disciplined. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think the yeah, definitely yeah, I agree to, there needs to be re repercussions for people's actions. Um, mm. But I do think we need to think about the repercussions, right? We need to think about the long-term um, consequences of our immediate reactions, right? Those guys' immediate reactions killed um, killed George, George Floyd, right? Yeah, they killed mm. him, right? Th that was the immediate response. So now their lives are fucked up. They're fending for their lives. They're trying to, you know, hide from, from the public and stuff like that. <laughs> that was an immediate knee-jerk reaction versus thinking about the long-term consequences of what's the best way to respond to this guy. And you know what I mean? People are talking about fire, fire, fire with fire. And then I asked the question of, you know, okay, how would you respond to this? And different people were talking about, you know, I would do this, I would do that, da 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 da. I'm gonna pull up those answers in a second. But what about you? Like, do you believe that the officer deserved to or deserves to be killed, or the people that were involved, do they deserve that same level of retaliation? Do people well, need the to one have that access, the one that was kneeling, the one that was kneeling on his neck? Yeah. Yeah. It needs to, look, I don't, I've never agreed, necessarily agreed with death penalty and all those things, but in this instance, yeah, because the, the main issue here was sometimes you don't know your strength. So, mm -hmm. like I said, he was kneeling on the guy, and he may not have known I'm hurting the guy, the guy can't breathe, but the guy was able to still tell you he can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. You should, a, a, a normal human being's reaction is to kind of pull back a bit and say, oh, hey, I, I didn't even realise, you know. Because you mm -hmm. can't touch you to tap out. You know, like when you do the MMA, you can still tap out and things like that. Yeah, you're already yeah. handcuffed him, so you mm -hmm. can't tap out. So he's using whatever um, is left of his, of his voice to express to you. Yeah. And the rest of his friends that were chilling and watching, one or two of you need to go and um, probably get death penalty as well, however, however they're going to do it. But all of them need yeah. to go to jail. And the one that's the culprit, the main guy, death penalty. We don't need you around. I'm sorry. Eye for, eye for an eye. Daryl said, the looting is completely counterproductive. It will only hurt the local community. Better to try and bring change politically, voting in local elections. So I don't, okay. So I agree to, to a level. We both agree to, on, on that um, sentiment that looting can be counterproductive. I don't believe mm -hmm. pure voting will, will change things. I think there needs to be a physical representation of people's frustration, 100%. Yeah, I don't think to just going either. to the voting polls, huh? I said there has to be. I agree with you. Yeah. I don't think just going to the voting polls and throwing your ballots in is going to change much because whoever is in power will bring who, someone else in power. We don't really know what's actually happening out there. You feel me? And when they, when they don't see the effects on the ground, we don't see that people are frustrated somehow, some way, they'll just keep changing power, getting the money, taking taxpayers' money, and doing anything they're doing and just in different ways. You get what I'm yeah. saying? But when they see the actual effects, not, not necessarily things like looting, I'm talking about protests, for instance. Yeah, when you see the actual effects, the frustration that people are doing, when you see that people are not buying from a particular company, when you see that people are responding to white collar crime in particular ways that are visual and visible on the ground, then I think things will change from the top. Not just the voting and throwing ballots in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jay, on the in, in terms of the topic of um people people responding like um violence with violence, right? So I put this I put this on a poll. Um, I said, what, 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 okay, I said specifically, where do you stand with these events? Should people be, be punished in the same way, fight violence with violence? 55% said we should find another way. 45% said we should carry on. And I said, what are the other ways? Some people I said, law is no, what is of racism. Sorry? I was about to say, what is the other way? Yeah, what are the other ways? Someone said, law against acts of racism and then jail. I think that's, that's fair, but then we need to define what those laws are as a people. Because like Shay was kind of alluding to before, 
a lot of white people don't really know what racism actually is in the first place. So to define acts of racism and make laws against it, it's going to be a long conversation. And it definitely needs to happen. It definitely needs to happen. There's yeah. things that people, that people do that are racist. They don't know are racist. It's like a $100 um, race um, video. You get me? When you talk about, look, if your life was ever difficult because of this, take a step forward. If your life was ever difficult mm -hmm. because of that, take a step back. I'll go to that. Someone said, I believe that we should speak to all people in the same language they speak to us. If you only understand physical language, then so be it. It'll speak to you the same exact way. So she's still scarred about the the fight, fighting fire fight, fire thing. Um, if this was now asked, if this was your family member, do you think you'd feel better if justice was was just jail or if it was physical? Um, Ninety percent of people said they want physical violence, <laughs> not in that sense, but they would appreciate the physical repercussion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then, I, I kind of agree with that part. But then this is the thing. I feel like a lot of people, it's like going to war. A lot of people, the idea of war is like, yeah, okay, it happens. When you actually see someone getting shot in the head, yeah, or when yeah. you actually see someone taking a knife and dragging it through someone else's guts and then pulling it back out and that person yeah. dropping it flat and then the life leave that person's eyes, it's not the same. So when yeah. people say fight violence with violence, kill them, kill them, kill them, it's because they're not holding the knife and they're not holding the gun. I think you also have to remember, even, even with wars, even when you watch all these TV shows, Game of Thrones, whatever, everyone has a position to play. You know, mm -hmm. some people fighters, some people the ones strategizing, some people the ones with a bit more money that can really get to the corporations and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, what you're seeing is an immediate reaction. People are outraged. So the mm -hmm. protests are happening. Mm -hmm. So then we also, need, like you're saying, we need to think long term. So there yeah. will be others, and that's what we're, we're, we're hoping. And what I think we're trying to say is the people that are close enough to make those changes in mm. the government and things like that, start making those changes while those that are on ground are doing what they can do. Yeah. This is something where you need to attack from every single angle. You see what I'm trying yeah. to say? So, yeah. yes, you can say, oh, they shouldn't be looting. They shouldn't be doing this and that. That's what them people are doing over there. Let's not get distracted with that. Those who are able to do what they can do in higher authorities, do that as well. This is like everyone's involved, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how I see it anyway. Um, I, I ask people, like, what would they do if they were, they were in that situation of um, the guy with the phone, right? Their responses were, someone said I'd walk away, someone said I'd slap him, um, someone said I'd smack the shit out of him, someone says... Um, if an officer can touch a person's property with force, they should get it back. Um, but they should be aware that people will feel more freedom to retaliate and stand up to them in their own right if they see it happening. So a lot of people are feeling yeah. the whole 5505 thing. And then I said, what would you tell your child? Um, in terms of, okay, in terms of the, the recent death with the police on, 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 on the throat, right? They said, I, I said, what would you do? Or what would you tell your child? They said, I would have got some people to jump officers from the back and push them down. Um, I try and help if jailed for interfering. Eventually, I'd be the hero anyway. Someone said I would react and push him probably. And someone said if it was my child, I'd tell my child to mind his business and walk away because they, they wouldn't want the child to face the repercussions. It's it's all difficult. All of this is difficult. Mm. I don't think there's one answer. I just think this incident has happened, and we all just need to react and make sure we get it right this time. Yeah, because enough, enough. That's really it. Like, people can say, "Oh, don't do this, don't do that," but the fact of the matter is, is this has happened, happened, it's been happening, mm. and we now need to show that, like, we are done. Like, this is this is it, and that means that the non-black people need to get involved as well. This isn't just a black fight. Right, right. They need right, to get involved right. as well. So, if you are someone that's friends with black people and you you're not educated or you don't think you fully understand, reach out yeah. to your black friends and discussions, real discussions, like, what's it like being black? I know it sounds like a silly question, but okay, when you come to work, how do you feel? Mm. Like, are there things that I'm, you can even ask, are there things that you feel I'm doing that makes you uncomfortable as a black person? Mm. Have I ever said anything? Mm. Those are the ways to start making changes, especially if you're not black and you're starting to think, well, I don't really get the issue, I don't really know how I'm supposed to 
yeah. help. You know what I'm trying to say because yeah. sometimes I do feel like maybe they're a bit confused because in a way it is confusing. Yeah. So yeah. ask questions. You know, if you're dating yeah. a black person, have a real question with them. Like, okay, what do you go through as a black woman, a black man? Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think- I think, I think that's an interesting point. I asked the question, should white people be able to speak on black issues? Can they also be pro-black? Um, and the basis of that was that I asked on Twitter, I said, are white people allowed to have a say or publicly support the fight against racism? Because we attack them for negligence and ignorance when they're silent, and then we attack them for appropriation and being opportunistic when they publicly stand for us. What's the consensus? Because you, as I'm sure you, you acknowledge, like, um, who's the singer, the single girl, um, the, the UK one? Well, um, Jessie J. Jessie J, right? So she came on and then she was crying, saying, you know, this racism stuff is ridiculous. We need to stand up for our black people. And then she got slated online. You feel me? She got like, oh, Jessie J, what do you know about this stuff? You don't know about the black struggle? Blah, 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 blah. And then um, people are talking about, you know, white people will say stuff like, you shouldn't be looting. There's better ways to do this. There needs to be a political agenda behind it. Black people will come in. Yo, shut the hell up. Your people have been looting our country for decades. Da, 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 da. White person will say, uh, yo, listen, um, guys, we should be peaceful. Black people will say, shut the hell up. What are you talking about peaceful? Y'all been fucking us up. Ain't you seen these videos of George Floyd? Blah, 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 blah. So, like, a lot of white people are sitting there right now feeling like no matter what I do or what I say, I'm getting attacked. And then you have the other white people who are saying nothing. And then we attacking them for like, yo, 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 motherfucker, you better step up. You better, you better help out. You better say something. Don't just sit back. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of white people or pe- non-people of color, whatever, they're sitting there feeling like, I don't know what, what role to play. I'm doomed if I do, doomed if I do or doomed if I don't. Like one of the most recent ones was like, um, Shay, you can probably, <laughs> you can probably appreciate this. It was a producer. He said, I'm going to release all, all the studio sessions I've had with musicians that haven't yeah. been mixed or mastered yet. So all the, all the white musicians I've, I've produced for, I've recorded with, if you don't speak up within the, the week, I'm going to release all your raw audio so the world can hear what you actually sound like without any editing. Yeah? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> so the question is, like, we're asking white people to step up, but what is the best way for them to step up and why are we attacking them when they do? First of all, you need to understand that we're frustrated. So when a black person, a white person does make a comment, the natural reaction is going to be, oh, what the hell are you talking about? That's just conversation. It should not deter you. That is passion. That's emotion coming out. Try and understand. The same way you try and understand other things, try and understand where that's coming from. On top of that, watch the videos. Read the articles. Because a lot of um, white people that I've been around even like when I was, you know, at work, mm. they'll scroll past it or they won't take in the information. Right. Take in the information. Because once you actually watch videos and you read and you actually see that this is not just necessarily about whether he's black or white, it's a basic human thing. Of yeah. A human being has been murdered. Yeah. You know, regardless of what, what you believe, life after death or whatever, the fact is physically this person is no longer here with us. Yeah. Is that a right thing? We all know mm. it's not right. So if we all know it's not right, kidney problem. Mm. Like, mm. what is the problem? Stand up and say it's not right. I think, um, so Matt said something, and she said, I think white privilege and fragility needs to be challenged more, pulling people up on the attitude, attitudes and behaviours. Yeah, and I, and I said this thing, I wasn't trying to make an excuse for them. I, I, when, when someone said one of the responses um, to, to all this stuff, is to change the laws. And I said, but how can we change the laws when white people don't know what racism is? How can we change the laws for racism? They know, and what, so- racism, they know what racism is. They know. Like, you know, we're at a point, it's 2020, yeah? Like, come on. So many things have happened in history. Even mm. if you don't necessarily know what racism is, you know what being prejudiced is. Do you know how many mm. times we've studied the World War and we know about Hitler and how he preferred people with blonde hair and blue eyes? And mm. we're, we study that history and you get everyone in class saying, oh, that's crazy. How can, I'm pretty sure Hitler had a preference for the people he really liked and stuff. Or mm. how can you be against Jews and stuff? If you mm. can understand that, why can you not understand people being against black people? So this is the thing. I think... Um, it's the same kind of concept. Yeah. But so, it's just so, been going on for way longer and, you know, all that. 
So you're all saying similar things there, right? So um, Ling Ling, loves you long time, said they don't take it because it doesn't affect them. Matt said they just don't feel it because it doesn't affect them. So this is the thing, mm -hmm. right? I believe everyone knows the concept of racism. The application mm -hmm. and effects of racism, they're not aware of, right? So mm -hmm. they, they, have, they have a clear understanding. A lot of Eastern Europeans will understand, okay, because of the color of your skin, people will treat you different. But what does being treated different mean? To them, it, it might just be as simple as, oh, they might not let you into a club. It's deeper than mm. that, right? It's inherent racism. It's that concept of, again, the $100 race video I was referring to. It's the socioeconomic in impacts of racism. The concept of, I've been in school since I was six years old, but I, I, I wasn't treated the same by my teacher. When, when I mm. got to high school, I wasn't given... Um, access to certain courses because I'm black. Mm. They, they already assumed that I was dumber than the rest and they didn't give yeah. me the opportunity to go to certain trips or, or, mm. or I had to work harder to get yes. apprenticeships or whatever it is or funding or I need to play a sport. Or when I'm in a community mm. and when I'm, when I'm in, a, in a professional space or corporation, um, mm. I might not get introduced to certain people that will allow me to thrive, right? So um, I might not get introduced to, in, in school, I might not get introduced to someone that will allow me to get into Cambridge or Oxford. They don't look at me yeah. as potential for Cambridge or Oxford because of my skin color. Yeah. So yeah. that's inherent racism, right? Like even the concept of being in the government, positions of power or positions that lead government, there's not many people of color in there. And that's where the racism kicks in, right? There's yeah. the access and information. Private schools, for the most part, you support yeah. it understanding of financial implications and taxation and credit. You need to understand that, but you're not given that information. So you need to work a little bit harder to get it, right? Mm. The majority of people that understand those concepts of businesses, trademark and intellectual property, there are people of privilege that come from those backgrounds that can already yeah. you know, teach the, the kids that and the kids can already yeah. exploit that. A lot of people start backwards. You're born into a world that's already against you because of the social and economic effects of racism. So you're already fighting an uphill battle. And that's what I think mm. they don't understand what white privilege is. Those concepts are what they don't actually see. The thing is as simple as I'm not allowed in the club because I'm black. It's deeper than that. They, they, uh, as much as we might have to change our mindsets about how we deal with certain things and don't loot and don't be aggressive and all these things we're saying, white people need to change their mindset about how they ignore or don't want to be informed. The information yeah. is out there. Yeah. Anything in this life, if you want to find out about it, you will. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying there's no excuse for it. So you're you're basically saying it's ignorance. It is ignorance. They 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 first of all need to want to care. Yeah. They need to want yeah. to care and make it their business, regardless yeah. of oh, I don't really know many black people, or whatever. Yeah. If a lot of people are crying about something, at some point, hey, let me just really see what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, interesting. it's interesting. So someone released this thing called um, A Guide to White Privilege. I don't know if you saw this little booklet. It's oh, I haven't seen it. I keep seeing it floating around, but I haven't actually seen it, read it. Right, it's from a lady called Courtney, Courtney Hand Design. That's her page. A Guide to White Privilege. It basically tells you what white privilege is and what it isn't, right? And she's put it in a mm. nice little comical format. It's pretty. It's easy to get. It's a visual representation of the video I keep referring to, the $100 race. Okay. And um, it says stuff like, what, what should I do with my white privilege? It says, teach other white folks the barriers to success for people of color. Promise to listen mm -hmm. and amplify the voices of people of color. Be more than not racist, but actively anti-racist. Confront racial injustices, even when it's uncomfortable. Because I think yeah. a lot of things that we're saying, a lot of things that we're saying is that white people can see this, they're aware of it, but their actions do not represent what they know. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So they're being oblivious or ignorant to a lot of things when they could do more. And it's, it's a, you're in a position of power, position of privilege, just do more. So for instance, um, people that see racial things happening or the kids that were in your school, right? Mm. Or even, I think we talk about corporate workspace. When you're in work, one of the yeah. managers whispers to you, you were right, that person did you wrong. But they're saying that to you. Yeah. And you're going to look at them and just be like, bro, why didn't you say that to, to the CFO or the CEO? Yeah. When, like, I when think people need to learn... Like, it's hard because I think maybe I'm naturally confrontational. So maybe to me, it's nothing. But with these kind of situations, um, you need to um, develop that sense of confronting uncomfortable situations. It is the only way forward. Yeah. If somebody whispers to you, you can be like, I appreciate that. But you know what? Why didn't you come forward next time? Yeah. 
I'd appreciate if you stepped up for me. Or, you know what, furthermore, there's nothing stopping you still speaking to the manager about it. That's yeah. what's going to help me. Yeah. That's not rude. No, it's not. You're just being assertive. It's not aggressive. You're being assertive and you're letting that person know that I appreciate that you have acknowledged this wrong. Yeah. But I'm going to need you to a bit do a bit better than that. That's all yeah. it is. That's all it is. Because systemic racism doesn't doesn't get fixed by votes in the ballot. You get me? Systemic mm -hmm. racism doesn't get fixed mm -hmm. by, you know, us just looting and stuff like that. It's systemic racism doesn't get fixed by one person speaking. It's all these things coming together. You feel me? It's people acknowledging that, yo, listen, my, the whole thing about, you know, that joke or oh, that, that, that tweet, it's not a joke, but that tweet was like, for every, <laughs> you can't, you can't be out here putting black dick in your mouth or fucking black guys and you, you don't want to speak up for black people. You get what I'm saying? It. You can't be having sex. It's this, the concept of appropriation, right? You can't be taking all the best of us and leaving us with the shit. And you and no, I, we go, back and forth. we go back and forth yeah. in the <laughs> yeah, about people, people like the Kim K situation or people, yeah, people that take black features, black music, surgery, black ass, black lips, black chest, black thighs, um, bl black lips. They, they, they take all those things and, and they market it for themselves, but then they don't take the skin color. They don't take the systemic implications of being that, that person. You feel me? The appropriation. Now, what we're saying is, listen, if you fuck with us on that level, if you really like the things that come with the good of us, help us with the things that come with, with the bad. You feel me? Help us with the things that we're suffering for just being ourselves. You want to be like us, but you don't really get to be like us because you're, you're, you're white for the most part. It's impossible to be us. You feel me? So sympathize. Yeah. Sympathize with the good things you take and be like, okay, I can't take the bad things, but I can help you with the bad things. Here you are. Here's my voice. Here, like the Kim K helping people in prison. That's dope, right? Do more, though. You know what I'm saying? Do more. Shay, are you still there? I don't know if your connection... Are you, you yeah, good? I'm here now, I think. I don't know what happened just then, but I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt said, everything you just said we see in schools daily, even now in 2020. I find it mad when white people think they experience racism. They cannot. People of color can, cannot be racist. Yeah, the, 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 the quote is, people of color cannot be racist because um, systemic racism is based off, like, race from youth. Like, it's a system. It's within it. Just being white, you can experience prejudice in terms of things like xenophobia, and I explained that. And people can be like, oh, Polish people, we don't like Polish people. Um, German people, we don't like German people. And they will, be, they will experience prejudices because of the accent or because of where they come from or they can't take our jobs. But that's usually where it starts and stops. You get what I'm saying? Whereas that's like with the whole Brexit thing, isn't it? Like when the whole Brexit thing happened, I think that's where maybe a lot of Europeans got a glimpse into what we as black people go through on a daily basis because up until yeah. that point they probably thought they were all one in it so i think no, that no, was to be fair, that to be fair, i've got a lot of like um migrant friends and eastern european friends and they do experience mm. their own prejudices right but mm. all i'm saying and this is not a case of mine is worse than yours but it's a fact yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is worse when it's racism as opposed to pre mm. pre prejudice and um yeah it's worse when it comes to racism because we're talking about something that's systemic. And systemic means like the structure of society is built against you. The, the, yeah. the, the blueprint of the minute you come out of your parents' womb, the way, the way it's been set up, the way your doctors write your name, from that that's point on, is. you're fighting an uphill battle. And that's the difference. You get what I'm saying? Just the little things like, now that I'm thinking about it, when you're in school and you know maybe you've got a supply teacher yeah, and they're going through the register yeah. and just even the anxiety you get because they're about to pronounce your name wrong. Yo, like, that's wild, it's, right? little, it's just little things like that. I remember every time I'd get a new teacher for, you know, a different year when you go up in the years, mm. I would have this anxiety that this teacher's about to say my name wrong. I've got to deal with this. Um, maybe you're in a class with new people, you know, like when I first started secondary school mm. and you've got to get up and be like, no, this is how I pronounce my name. Then you get some kids in the corner laughing. It's just, it's, there's so many things that people I don't, and, and you know, you know what, the, the interesting thing about that kind of stuff, and we're talking about what people can do to, to make things better, right? Yeah. The, the teachers, knowing that's a reoccurring thing for them every year. And I feel like yeah. in this country in particular, we're talking about what, race, what racism like is in the UK. That is something that people don't acknowledge, right? And that, that links not just with, you know, your, your, your color. That also links with people of other regions in the world that could be not mm -hmm. black, but their names could still be a bit, like, difficult to pronounce. A bunch of syllables, yeah. right? The teacher should acknowledge that this happens every year. 
They used to be yes. kids as well. They know kids are evil. So they should be able to just take the kid to the side before the lesson starts. Look at your fucking register as a teacher and how be like, hey, you can you tell me how you pronounce your name, please? Yeah. You know what I had to do? I remember that used to give me so much anxiety that one day I had a chat with my mum and my mum was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Every year before you start, we'll come in earlier, I'll meet your teacher and I'll say, this is her name. This That's is how you say what it. I mean. That's an extra step that you have to take because and, you're coming. Yeah. And then as I got older, it was something I then started to do. I would go in and be like, oh, yeah, I just want you to know this is how you say my name. Yeah. Um, there's not a H there, but if it helps you, just think of sure as you say my name, Shane, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And obviously yeah. the full name, Olua Shane, just to get yeah. into their head and, you know, now I don't really do that. I just correct you, but I'm and just the thinking about is, it. The fact that there's so many extra steps that we have to take as people of colour that yeah. the white people don't have to take. And it's just a case of them acknowledging that thing. You feel me? Just acknowledging. But I've got a few seconds left, so I'm going to leave everyone with this. Shay, thanks for coming through. I really appreciate you, yeah? Thank um, you for having me. For, for people, for white people and people that really want to know what they can be doing to help the situation going forward, there are um, a few fundraisers that, that are happening right now, a few um, payment plans you guys can actually go through. I'll put the links up later. But what should I do with my white privilege, right? Teach other white folks the barriers to success for people of color. Promise to listen to promise to listen to them and amplify the voices of people of color. Be more than not racist, but actively anti-racist. Confront racial injustices injustice when it's uncomfortable. I. What's it called? No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Okay. Keeping it raw. Keeping it real. 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 real.